Hi boys and girls, welcome to the, today's lesson. We are going to be reading one of my favorite books. This is called Iggy Peck Architect. The author's name is Angia Beatty. Do you know what the author does? The author writes the words in the book and the illustrator is David Roberts. Do you know what the illustrator does? The illustrator is the person who draws the pictures. Young Iggy Peck is an architect and has been since he was two. When he built a great tower in only an hour with nothing but diapers and glue. Good gracious, Ignatius, his mother explained. That's the coolest thing I've ever seen. But her smile faded fast as a light wind blew past and she realized those diapers weren't clean. Ignatius, my son, what on earth have you done? That's disgusting and nasty, it stinks. But Iggy was gone, he was out on the lawn using dirt clods to build a great sphinx. Wow, look what he's doing. When Iggy was three, his parents could see his unusual passion would stay. He built churches and chapels from peaches and apples and temples for modeling clay. He's very creative. At dinner one night, to his father's delight, Iggy got a bright gleam in his eye and out on the porch built the St. Louis Arch from pancakes and coconut pie. Uh-oh. <laughs> Dear Ig had made it until second grade when his teacher was Miss Lila Greer. On the very first day, she had this to say, we do not talk of buildings in here. Gothic or Romanesque, I couldn't care less about buildings ancient or new. She said in her lecture about architecture that it had no place in grade two. How do you think Iggy's gonna feel now? That might seem severe, but she was sincere for when she was no more than seven, She'd had a great fright at a dizzying height in a building so tall it scraped heaven. On an architect's tour of the 95th floor, young Lila got lost from the group. She was found two days later stuck in an elevator eating cheese with a French circus troupe. After that day, it's quite safe to say she thought all building lovers were nuts. As a teacher, she thought that above all one ought to avoid them, no ifs, ands, or buts. As you might guess, it would cause Iggy stress to hear such terrible talk, but he didn't hear. He sat in the rear while building a castle of chalk. You, Iggy Peck, your desk is a wreck. Tear down that castle right now. You will not build in here. Is that perfectly Clear? Do you need to see Principal How? No, ma'am, Iggy said. He lowered his head and his heart sank down to the floor. With no chance to build, his interest was killed. Now second grade was a bore. After 12 long weeks that passed in a haze of reading, writing, and arithmetic, Miss Greer took the class to Blue River Pass where a hike and an old-fashioned picnic. They crossed an old trestle to a small island nestled in the heart of a burning stream. But they no sooner passed that the footbridge collapsed and Miss Lila Greer started to scream. We're trapped here, oh my, alas kids, goodbye. Her eyes rolled back in her head. She dropped to the ground with a vague groaning sound Luckily, fainted, not dead. The class was amazed. They stood there quite dazed, uncertain of what they should do. But one young, bright man was off hatching a plan, which started with Miss Lila's shoe. Who do you think that boy is? Soon, each lad and lass there, 
at Blue River Pass was working together as one. And when she came to, Miss Lila Greer knew that something quite brave had been done. Look at what she did. She looked in the air and saw hanging there a structure with cables and braces. And on the far side, beginning with pride, were 17 smiling young faces. Boots, tree roots, and strings, fruit roll-ups and things, some of which should not be mentioned, were stretched ridge to ridge in a glorious bridge, dangling from shoestring suspension. It all became clear to Miss Lila Greer as she crossed the bridge over the stream. There are worse things to do when you're in grade two than to spend your time building a dream. Now every week at Blue River Creek Elementary in second grade, all the school kids can hear along with Miss Greer how the world's greatest buildings were made. The weekly guest speaker in t-shirt and sneakers talks of buildings from Rome to Quebec. Of course, he's the guy who builds towers from pie, that brilliant young man, Iggy Peck. So today, boys and girls, you are going to try to build your own bridge, and we're going to see how much weight your bridge can hold. You can use anything you have around your house to build with, if you have wooden blocks, if you have Legos, recycled material like cardboard, construction paper, you find what's available to you, and you are going to use your creative brains and try to think of a way to design this bridge so that it could hold the most weight. Before you start, I want us to take a look at some famous bridges that are built all over the world. So boys and girls, this bridge right here is called the Golden Gate Bridge. This is located in California, which is in the United States of America. This bridge is a beautiful bridge and you can see the color and how it's built. Here is the Great Belt Bridge in Denmark. You can see how different they all look. This is the Brooklyn Bridge in New York in the United States of America. Here is the Alicantra Bridge in Spain. Look at how this one looks. This one looks like it was built a long time ago by the way it is set up and the materials that they used. This is the Sydney Harbor Bridge. This is located in Australia. This bridge doesn't really have much supporting it in the middle at all that's going in the water. I wonder why that is. Here is the Pearl Bridge in Japan. This one looks so long. I would be scared to go across this bridge. This is the Tower Bridge in London, England. This bridge has also been built many years ago. So your challenge for today is you are going to try to create your own bridge. I'm going to give you some websites that you can look and watch some more videos to see how bridges are made and what type of bridges there are. And you are going to decide how you want to design your bridge. You are going to also test your bridge out by seeing how much weight it can hold. So always remember when you're working to use the engineering design process. So first we're gonna ask, what is our challenge for today? And that is going to be to create a bridge that can hold the most weight. So I want you to put your thinking caps on and imagine what is this bridge going to have? What are you going to be designing in your bridge? Imagine and think and think and see what you can create. And next you're going to plan. So you can get some paper out, you can print the next slides, and draw and decide what materials are you going to use? How are you going to build your bridge? How is it going to come together? Plan and think. And then you're going to create and you're going to test your bridge. So when you build your bridge and you feel like it's ready, you can get some coins, maybe a book, maybe something in your kitchen that might be a little bit heavy and you're gonna place it on your bridge and try to see how much weight it can hold. And then we always improve. So no matter what we do, we can always fix it and make it better. So you are going to try to 
change your bridge so that it can be a little bit better or change something so it's a little bit different than the first time and then you're going to test it out again. I know you can do this and I'm so excited to see what you're going to make. So feel free to send some pictures and let me know what you create. Good luck and happy building.